in the 30 plus years that I've been coaching um, from top to bottom, there's more talent and, and more depth uh, than, we've, than I've ever seen. We finished strong to get into the NCAAs the previous year, but had our struggles throughout. Um, I felt that with the pieces that we had, I thought we were going to be a team to beat. When we got Travis and we got Eli back, it was, it was we really felt rejuvenated. When I heard he was coming back, I was just so happy because I, I know what he brings to the table. I mean, he, he can slash, he can shoot, he defends, block shots, rebounds. Well, my decision to come back to the team was a pretty tough one, but I'd love the team and I just wanted us to win. I could have really cared less if I, how much I play. Travis, I always just talk about this kid to guys on the team. He's Division II, 1,000 point scorer, and pretty much just a man amongst kids. You know, he's the kid's huge, and he, he does it all. The Division three teams that go far into the NCAA tournament, you know, you have a player like Travis on that team where you get the trickle down effect. I kind of felt like the coaches had an idea we were going to be really good. With the pieces that we had, I thought that we might be the team to beat in the Empire 8. We kind of had a tough time in the beginning adjusting to the play, playing together in game scenarios. Early struggles were largely a result of learning how to play together. Uh, we realized we, we needed to revamp our offense a little bit, so we kind of went back to the drawing board. And I had never done that in 33 years of coaching, where we were, geez, at that time, probably five or six weeks into the season, and all of a sudden we're saying, this isn't working, we got to try something else. We, we had a big team meeting, and everyone who had something to say voiced their concerns or voiced their opinion on what we should do after that. Once we started going, you know, 12 out of 14, we looked at each other and we just said, this is what we're capable of, we know what we can do. And uh, we beat a lot of good good teams during that stretch. Represent with the Boom Bap Classic. Boy Wonder on the microphone, dropping thunder. Boy, making noise, they see stars, I'm going undercover. Lord knows we are the bread and butter. Boy, flows leaving his foes frozen in the gutter. We hot, got a rock and all outside of the box. And peace, block, Biggie, LG, and Villa for hip hop. I mean, it was great basketball to watch, to be a part of. It was, everything was clicking. The offense was flowing. The defense was looking great. We always played that defense was our priority, and we wanted to be known for that. I think during those 14 games, we really, we stepped up the defense. We talked about some swag for that game, and I thought they exhibited it during the game. And it seemed to, to catch on a little bit. And, uh, you know, right then I saw that, you know, that maybe we had something going here. Number 20 in the country, Stephen, coming in in first place in the Empire 8 Conference, and they visit second place Ithaca College tonight. I, I thought our, our season was a tale of three completely separate segments almost. It was the early season when we were, getting, when we were learning how to play together. It was mid-season where, where I felt we started hitting a role and playing well. And then we had, you know, the, the injuries to Andre. Osimo misses the shot, he is down. He is in pain. Holding his ankle, Thompson on the other end for three. That one's no good. Big break for the Bombers. And a timeout on the floor now. Osimo slapping the floor in pain. My initial reaction was, is he overreacting? Is it really that bad? Because it, you know, it did seem as though he was in a great deal of pain. I kind of just thought he 
may have slightly rolled it a little bit, and I thought we may have him back in a couple of days. You know, I, I felt great out there. I was rebounding the ball, scoring, my shot felt good, and then it was the most painful thing I've experienced basketball injury-wise. When the dust settled a little bit, we lost a very big part of our team, and, you know, I don't think we could have replaced it. Yeah, it, it was difficult, you know, with Andre going down and then, you know, immediately soon after with Travis, uh, you know, coming down with an injury, it was a difficult, difficult time for the whole team. I think it was in the same spot on the floor, too. That sucked. Getting hurt sucks. Having to sit out on the sidelines and watch your team play is, it's tough. Once Travis went down, too, and Dre was down, I think that kind of took a lot out of us. This is our chance uh, to, to have a really successful uh, year, and, and we're making a great run. And then all of a sudden, you lose two of your guys who were not only great players, um, but great leaders. We knew we'd have Travis, and we knew Dre would be coming back as well. So really, we were just we just had to keep going and know that other guys are going to step up like the freshmen did. And by the time the E8s come back, you know we'll be at full strength again. We had no other way to get into the NCAA tournament. The mentality of refusing to lose uh, kind of set in, and, and we knew what we were in for when we were heading down to Stevens. My concern going in early on was uh, Fisher was on a nine-game winning streak. I think the last time they had lost was to us. We kind of felt like the underdogs again, even though we knew we could beat every team in our league like we had already. We beat St. John's Fisher twice. We beat Stevens once. We lost to Stevens without Travis or Dre. And then we lost to Utica on a buzzer beater. I mean, we were the top seed going in. Stevens just had a better record. I really didn't expect them to stop the court at Stevens. Um, I was still playing defense, and I looked around. I noticed people clapping. I was like, oh, like, I guess they stopped the game. This is awesome. Like, I was really honored that they did that. It was sweet being on the court with them getting it. I know he really didn't care that much about it. Obviously, he'd like to get it, but he wanted to win that game more than anything. To beat them a third time was, was just tremendous, and we knew that it would it would propel us into the next day. We knew that we, we weren't going to lose uh, in the championship game against Stevens. You know, when we played them the second time, they they destroyed us by by at least 20, and they were talking shit when they were doing it too. We absolutely hate Stevens, and I especially hate their student section. Uh, I think everyone does. And so we just, you know, that just fires us up more because we hate them so much. We, ha you know, we just want to beat them. Twenty minutes for the NCAA's guys. Twenty. Right. <laughs> We're the defending champs. No one's an underdog in here, man. Yeah. We're the defending champs. They gotta knock us off. Let's go. Everyone was so much so happy after the game, you know, everyone was going crazy, dancing around, screaming. It was just, it was special. And we weren't looking too far ahead to the NCAAs quite yet, you know. I think we took a day or two to really enjoy that win. Uh, I watched us get beat pretty bad at Stevens, you know, two weeks prior. So to go out there and, and really shut them up, shut them down, and win by double digits for a championship game was, it was awesome. We have 
a serious opportunity to make a run here. We got the guys to do it. Teams are going to be underestimating us. We're not going to get to be a high seed in the tournament by any means. If we play to the level we're capable of playing at, then uh, we're, we're going to make a run. After the meeting, I went down to the locker room and started, you know, prepping for the game, writing our stuff on the board, our scout, the last minute things and all that. And I stayed down there. I never went up to, to get a feel for the environment. The coaches walked into the locker room just before that and they, they go, it's nuts up there. They go, it is absolutely insane. I remember walking into the gym. Um, I just, just got my ankle taped and it's like, you know, an hour before the game or so and I'm walking in and these two big football players come up and they're like, hey, fuck you with the guy. Yeah, like, yeah, fuck you, like right in my face. I'm like, Jesus. All right, let's go. You know, I was, at that point, I was dunking and my head was getting three feet above the rim. I was like, OK, I'm ready now. once too often. If you guys are going to win this game, you're going to do it with composure, not bitching and moaning at the referees. So I got news for you. They ain't going to change anything. OK, one guy, get it out of your system now. If you want to say how much they blow, say it now. Get it the fuck over with so when we get up on the floor, we can concentrate on winning a game. Go. There you go. Bombers down three. One, two, three. Bombers. Bombers. Well, I remember saying to Tanus at the time, we're going to have to, we're going to have to make an adjustment right here, or, or we're, because we're, we're on the edge, you know, we're, we're on the precipice of disaster. And I think I had almost about gotten those words out of my mouth when Sean Rossi gets fouled, taking a three, hits all three free throws, and then we go on a 15-0 run from that point. <laughs> Three, one, two, three. The big hype was surrounded, uh, you know, their, their best player, John DeBardo. Going into that Rochester game, there were a couple defensive strategies we had. It was stop DeBardo, stop DeBardo, and stop DeBardo. I mean, that kid, I think, was just named as the Jostens Trophy winner as a Division Three Player of the Year. He was coming off of a 42-point performance in the previous NCAA game. Uh, we made a big game plan for him. Um, I knew I was going to be the guy, but honestly, I would say that is the reason I came back, was to guard DeBardo, because that's what I love to do. He's my best friend from home, um, so I'd never played against him on like a formal basis like this, only in pickup and stuff. So, you know, we had a good, good amount of shit talk leading up to the week. You know, this kid's supposed to be so good. He's supposed to be the player of the year. Well, all right, like, like, let's prove it, you know? Let's see what you can do. The shots that they made were harder than the shots we made for a day, right? All right, so we continue getting those inside shots. Keep taking the ball to the basket, okay? All right. The last time out, we drew up a play to get Trav the ball, and there's no one else I'd rather uh, I'd want to have it more than him. Uh, but when we were leaving the timeout, Coach Burton grabbed, pulled me aside, and they were leaving the the huddle, I just grabbed Eli and said, uh, tip and the miss. We kind of linked arms on the bench, me and the other players. Everyone was real excited. I remember just watching Sean dribble at half court and just dribble, and no one picking him up as the clock's winding down. When Travis got the ball on the wing, we were thinking, all right, 
the Sabs a chance of going in. He was bouncing around, he was bouncing around. I was just kind of looking at the ball. Got such a good view and behind him, I'm like, oh, and I see it, you know, hit off the front rim, then backboard, and then go off the side rim, and then I see Eli and his bald ass head got pop up, and he just, you know, tips it in over, and I, I was just in such shock. I didn't know if he got it off in time. I, like, saw Healy running at me, and then I gra Dre grabbed me, and I dress is kind of just a big blur. I remember jumping up and down. It was nuts. It was so awesome. <laughs> Easily one of the most exciting moments uh, in my life to be a part of a team like that. We just beat a team that was number one in the country at one point. You know, we, that almost makes us number one. Our confidence was just at an all-time high. I mean, we had just beat Fisher, we had just beat Stevens, beat Springfield, beat Rochester, all on the road. All these teams are great teams. These guys don't think you can beat them. They, they don't think we belong on the same floor with them. They're from the big bad Neskak and we're from the little Empire 8, all right? They have no respect for you whatsoever. We were so confident in ourselves that, you know, we were, we were like, why don't we just, you know, mess around and win the whole damn thing? gambling and stuff like that, you got to make them earn everything they got. We're capable of closing them out like we've done with other teams. All right, we've come out and come out and locked down teams in the second half. That's it's not a fucking game. game. Let's go. So, 20 minutes. Let's come out hot. Boys. Bombers on three. One, two, and three. Bombers. Bombers. Been in the situation before where you know the crowd was going nuts and it's a back and forth type of game so we were able to just uh, you know rest on the things we've done in the past and just just play our game so shit, here we go again you know down nine or ten with four minutes to go you know we claw back uh, and once again, Eli gives us a, a, a boost. At the point where we were able to get back into it and, and tie it or even take the lead, I remember thinking to myself, this could come down to the last possession and it might be the team with the ball who wins the game. We had it. I thought we had that game. Um, especially, especially when Frank threw in the corner. But, uh, you know, I guess we just left too much time in the clock. I don't know, he Houdini just lay out of it. I think I got a fingertip on something. I thought it was the ball. It was right there in front of me. We fought so hard to come back and we took the lead with five seconds left. Just collectively as a team, we just didn't get back on defense. And you know, you gotta you got to thank Andre for getting back on defense. I mean, if he's not back, then that kid just goes in for a wide open layup. You know, in, in a clutch situation like that, if you're going to go to the line down one with one second left, if you're going to make two free throws, then I guess you deserve to win the game. I just I walked into the locker room, sat down, and uh, just kind of broke down. And um, all the guys sort of came over and um, had my back, and so did the coaches. He meant so much to our program that. <laughs> <laughs> There isn't anything that I can say that's going to make you guys feel any better or us feel any better. You know, you guys showed a lot of heart in the second half. You held them to 38% shooting. You did everything you had to do defensively. Um, didn't end the way we wanted it to, but 
you know, to you seniors, you look at what you accomplished in your career, and again, it's probably not going to mean much to you now. But when you think back, three NCAA tournaments and an ECAC championship, three 20-win seasons, um, I'm very proud of you. I, I know this, when I reflect back on the season after I get done with the disappointment, I'm going to feel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a lot more smiles on my face than frowns with what you guys did. Let me ask you guys one question. Anybody who was out there, did you not give 100%? Then your heads deserve to be high. No head hanging. Um, very proud of you. You know, you represented yourselves, us, your families at the college. Heads are high. Heads are high. You know, from all of the preseason runnings we've done to, you know, team handball we played and, you know, all the way down to the 15 point uh, E8 championship and the NCAA run with me. I remember it all. You know, I'll, I'll never forget these guys and, and what they did and how they pulled together. And it's one of the most close-knit, most enjoyable groups of kids that I've, I've ever coached. We weren't just a basketball team. Like, it was a family. And uh, personally, I think I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in touch with a lot of these kids for the rest of my life because what we did, we I mean, we made history at this school. We're, you know, we did something that no one else, no other group of guys has ever done together. Thank you.